Do you think it would ever be possible to make the object ball spin around corners if you played it in exactly the right way? So long as the table's level, you should be thinking obviously not. A pot either goes or it doesn't. You can't make it swerve like the cue ball. Or can you? Because sometimes when you strike the object ball, you will make it spin. And if I put side spin on the cue ball, it will make it arc across the table. So this is how it might work. And it's all about angles. If I get the cue ball into this space, dead in line with a pocket on a straight shot, it's guaranteed to go in. However, on an angled shot, if I do the same thing, I might miss it thick. That's because when you play a shot at an angle, it slightly straightens up. Allowing for this can be relatively simple, but why does it happen? Because this straightening up of the object ball is called impact throw, and we need to know exactly how it works. Does the angle force the ball wider, meaning it's going to go in a straight line towards this position? Or does the object ball initially move in the right direction before spinning offline? In which case, we can use this effect to help us pot around corners. Well, the answer appears to be a mixture of the two, but it definitely makes the object ball spin, which is exactly what we need to happen. But if we want this to work, we have to be able to maximise impact throw. So to do this, I'm using this pool ball, which is almost exactly the same size as a regular snooker ball, and handily for us has this nice blue stripe down the middle of it, which is really easy for the camera to pick up. Playing the shot from the right puts left hand side on the ball, which on a snooker table makes it spin to the left, and playing it from the left puts right hand spin on the ball, making it spin to the right. So if we want to spin around this obstacle, we're going to have to play the shot from this direction. And if we want to spin this way around the obstacle, we're going to have to play the shot from this direction. But there's far more to it than that, meaning we can generate extra spin. The power of a shot has an influence as well. A softer shot doesn't have anywhere near as much of an influence over the spin as a harder one. However, as long as you don't play it too slowly, you're going to generate a similar amount of spin to a harder shot, and playing a shot harder creates different problems. So if you play the shot harder like this, then the spin doesn't have time to grip the cloth. So you need a moderate speed. But what's the right angle to play the shot at? A thinner shot increases the amount the object ball rotates to a point where it starts reducing the amount of spin again. So it appears you get the object ball spinning the most off a half an inch shot. So the best way to make the object ball spin to the right around this line of reds is to play it at a medium pace with an angle that means you hit roughly half the object ball. But if we want to make the object ball spin to the left around the reds, we need to do exactly the same thing, but this time from the right side of the object ball. But it also depends on how the cue ball is spinning. Let's start by looking at how backspin affects the shot, because surprisingly this does very little. You may have noticed on a shot like this that a screw shot is a lot easier to cut in than a stun shot. With this type of shot, the blue band of the 10 ball tracks to the pocket and hardly spins, and you can see when it makes contact with the cue ball from another angle, it rolls straight away. This also prevents it from throwing so wide, whereas a stun shot makes the blue band of the 10 ball spin a lot on impact, and if you look at it from the other angle, you can see the 10 ball initially slides quite a bit before it starts to roll. So if I play the same shot as a stun shot, it's going to straighten up a little bit more, and that's something I'm going to have to allow for. But ideally for what we're looking at now, the stun shot makes the object ball slide further and creates the most amount of spin. But what happens if I play the shot with top spin? The last time I looked at this, I said it reacted similarly to a stun shot, but after doing a little bit more research, especially on the way it makes the object ball spin, I can say it doesn't quite affect the object ball the same as a stun shot, and it doesn't quite make it spin as much. So playing the shot with top spin makes the ball rotate a little bit. A stun shot will make it rotate the most, which is going to be helpful. And heavy backspin reduces the impact throw and almost reduces the rotation altogether.
But what about side spin? Left hand side and right hand side will have a different effect depending on which side of the object ball you are. So that's why I'm going to refer to these as inside spin and outside spin. Here's how it works. So here I'm going to be cutting the ball to the right with right hand side, so inside spin. If I was playing with left hand side, that would be outside spin. But it's inside spin that may help us the most because the cue ball is going to be spinning in the opposite direction to what we want the object ball to spin in, which should increase the effect. You think it would cause more object ball rotation, but it doesn't. It's only going to spin about the same amount as a stun shot. The fascinating one though is outside spin. Because this does have an effect, making the object ball spin in the opposite direction. So if we're playing a shot from the left, instead of spinning to the right, the object ball will also spin to the left. So if I've got the wrong angle, I should be over there, then I can use outside spin to correct this problem, which is left hand side here. The only problem is that's incredibly difficult to line up. So while I work out how to line these shots up, let's just find Michael, who's in Lagos, Nigeria, which is there. So if I find myself in a game with a black like this that doesn't quite go and I need to swerve it around to the left, my best chance of doing so is to leave myself a half ball black and to play it at a medium pace as a stun shot. But does it actually work? Because we know the object ball has side spin on it, but does the side spin have time to grip the cloth? Because if I play this shot with a small amount of side and hit it about that half, it's not going to make any difference. To figure it out, I've put the 10 ball on the blue spot and I'm leaving the red in a position where it doesn't quite pot. It should be about there. And then I can attempt to pot the 10 ball as a stun shot. And if it goes, then it means this works. Yeah. This might take a while. So the purpose of this test is to block the straight shot, so I can only pot the 10 ball if I successfully swerve it around the red. I didn't consider that the nap of the table might help the 10 ball around the red, but either way I potted it and was able to draw a straight line to the pocket showing exactly the path the 10 ball took. The results were inconclusive, the 10 ball went in but I couldn't see it move away from this straight line. And when I put the cue ball on the blue spot and tried to pot the white, I did so without any spin. But side needs space to take effect. So new plan, we're going to be doing the same thing into that corner pocket because this time the nap definitely won't take it and it's got more time to rotate. So it should work out a bit better. This took me even longer because not only was I trying to pot a ball that didn't actually go, I was doing it from further away this time and I was making extra sure I didn't put the red in the wrong position. So I potted it and I definitely got as close to the red as I possibly could, but had I made it spin round into the pocket? To find out I used the line again, this time on the side of the 10 ball so I could see exactly how it moved. But I couldn't see from this distance so I had to zoom in. It's a bit pixelated because I can only do these shots in 1080p at slow motion. But you can just about see it swerve very slightly to the right side of this line, which is roughly 1 to 2 millimeters to the right. So that just left the big question, could I pot the cue ball from the same position? I got as close to the red as I could and it just rattled and didn't go into the pocket. Now I could see I could have been a little bit closer to the red but I was only about half a millimeter away. But if you look at the relative speed of the balls the cue ball's going a lot slower. So what we can conclude from this is it works but only by that one to two millimeters over distance. And I can't help think that's such a small amount, it's barely worth thinking about. So before we find out what we can do with it, let's just find old man Gibson, who's from Northampton in the United Kingdom, which is there. Even if you play this perfectly, you're not going to be able to use it to pop balls that don't actually go. But if you've got a shot that only goes into half a pocket, you're going to know the easiest place to put the cue ball, leaving yourself a half ball shot and playing it as a medium pace stun shot. Even though this doesn't seem like much of a win, if you consider it'll have the exact opposite effect from the other side, it is worth noting. And if you are on the wrong side of the ball, you can always use outside spin to reverse the effect. But honestly, this isn't really worth thinking about. 
When you see the object ball rotate like this after being struck by the cue ball, it seems like a lot and that it'll have a significant difference. But how far towards the edge of the ten ball do you think I would need to strike to create the same effect? It's actually very close to the centre. In fact, I put more spin on the ten ball here than I could the entire video. If the C is the centre of the cue ball, then you get roughly the same amount of spin we were getting on the object ball by hitting the I. And as you can see, that's not very much. So in theory you can make the object ball spin round corners, but in practice it doesn't really work. Although if you want to find out about something that will help you, like lining shots up with side spin like I was doing earlier in the video, then have a look at these two. And remember, don't just watch play, and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel, and visit the website. See you later!